Hello everyone and welcome back to Fan Geared. I'm Josh. And I'm Tommy. And of course, joining the two of us as per usual is Alright, let's get into it today. We're gonna be talking about Summer. Summer? Cause what day is it today? September third fourth. The fourth? It's the fourth. Yes, today, uh, the day of this upload is September the 4th. <laughs> Which means summer's over. If you're just joining us now today, you missed it. This uh, this heat wave rolling through California would say otherwise. Am mm-hmm. I right? Okay. Yeah. The days are still the same. Well, it's, yeah, okay. Definitely <laughs> summer's over at the start of September. Summer's over. But that doesn't mean we can't reminisce on the good old days. I think that means we have to reminisce on the good old days. Should we do that on the podcast instead? Yeah, yeah. All right, we're switching gears. We're going to talk about summer and our favorite movies and video games. Not necessarily their favorite. And our least favorites. Yeah. And the ones we hated. Ooh. You know what we're not going to talk about? The middle of the road ones. (laughs) The mediocre, forgettable ones? Yes. Yeah, screw those ones. Yeah, fucking at you, Paper Towns. Oh, shots fired. Never saw it. Yeah, never saw it. Okay, but that's why we're not talking about it. Anyway. (laughs) Uh, Where are we going to start? Let's start with some moves. Movies? All right. What do you got for me, Tommy? Let's all let you start the movies. Well, should we start on a pause? Positive note? A pause note? A pause not? Um, one of the movies I have to remember from this summer the most. Um, well, let's hear it. <laughs> uh, Mad Max. Matthew Max. Mad Max. Matthew Maxwell. Mad Max. Okay. It's, is his name Matthew? No. It's Max. Yes. Why are you saying that? Okay. That's my favorite movie of the year. Yeah. It kind of kicked off the summer. Mm-hmm. Very good action-packed what do you look for in a summer flick action typically but what i also like to see is some story Mm -hmm. character Uh symbolism setting set yeah desert setting exposition solid script great acting good Practical effects, mostly. And, I mean, is that so much to ask for in a movie? No. All those things? I think you should have at least those things in a movie. You would think that they would try to. Yeah. Well, Mad Max pulled it off. I think we're pretty much in agreement about this one. It's a great one. It's a good one. It's going to be remembered for years. I'm about to buy it on Blu-ray. Wow. It just came out, huh? Mm-hmm. And people are going to be watching it for summers to come. Summers to come, but only in the summer. You're not allowed. Right. I mean, I just bought it on Blu-ray, but it's sitting on the shelf right now. Not. It's not going to... It's not seeing any life for another year. Mm-hmm. I mean, why would it? When summer it's, movie. When it's fall or winter, or even spring, you don't want to want to watch a movie about a desert. No. You want to watch that movie in the summer when it's hot. When you can empathize with the people who are thirsty. Exactly. For that water. Exactly. That's what made the movie so great, in my opinion. The thirsty people. Yeah. <laughs> and how I could empathize with yeah. their thirst. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was a good way to kick off summer, for sure. It was a great movie. We saw that one together. We did. We uh, had a great, great old time. It was a good date night dinner and a movie. That is, That did happen. Didn't get laid, though. So. Yeah. Well, hey, speak for yourself. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Not sure. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's let's flip flop. Flip flop. Mad Max was a great movie. Mm-hmm. Fantastic Four was a great big flop. A great big flop. Biggest summer disappointment. Probably. How disappointed can you really be? Well, it had a lot of potential. How good did this movie look from the get-go? It 
there were moments when it looked like it was gonna be good yeah like after they had released like one trailer yeah but we saw how they filmed it in like two weeks 100 percent green screen yeah um yeah yeah but the original script was apparently pretty good Mm. okay but so, the movie wasn't good, so no, it's irrelevant. Okay. <laughs> the point is, there were glimpses of goodness. So we're still talking about summer movies. Yeah. So when you think summer, you want action. <laughs> you want great acting. You want a Don't script. You want that. a great story. None of that. You want great practical effects. Right. Yeah, Fantastic Four. How many Four, of these did I have? Zero. 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 Including action. Zero. Well, there you have it, folks. Fantastic Four, not a summer movie. No, it was a summer movie. It came out in the summer, sure. It was a summer disappointment. It was a summer disappointment. Well, let's, let's uh, look at the opposite. A summer surprise. We have a couple options here. Um... Would you like to take a look at the list? No. I, I, <laughs> as far as summer surprises, first thing that comes to my mind is, let's let's just do them both. Spy mm-hmm. and The Gift. Okay. Both. Well, I think The Gift is an extraordinary movie. I debated seeing that the other day. I went to go see something else, which we'll get to talk about later. Um, but I plan on seeing it probably within the week. Nice. It's going to be out of theaters any second now. So. Any second? Wow. I better run there right now. Luckily, nothing's coming out. We'll this see weekend, you next week. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Gift as well. Gift as well. Gift is like, I had my hands over my mouth, tears in my eyes, shocking. Wow. That's I mean, a big... I feel like I'm overselling it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not underselling it. It was, it was good. Real good stuff. Uh, Spy also... Not, I mean, not like a fantastic movie, but given the track record from the cast and crew, it was a good um, surprise. A good good time at the movies. Not a, For sure. Not a waste of your gosh dang time. Not a waste of that 1175 if you can catch my drift. Yeah, right. For normies, maybe. <laughs> I don't remember right. the last time I paid for a movie. Yeah, seriously. Press passes. Anyway. <laughs> um, let's move on to, I mean, I think we can agree. A gray. A gray area? This is a gray area. Okay. Funny I should accidentally say that. Um, cultural phenomenon. Oh, boy. The Minions. Wow, this is the one you want to bring up, huh? I mean, we're, it's got to come up eventually. <laughs> we would be remiss as to not bring it up. I mean, we have to bring it up when we're talking about the biggest movies of this summer. Minions, Minions is are everywhere. The biggest worldwide phenomenon of all time. recent memory since Mickey Mouse. Maybe it's. I mean, it's that big. It is. Like you see, middle-aged adults wearing Minions T-shirts, like. I gotta tell you, I I don't get it. Josh, what's wrong with society? I'll tell you what's happening with the minions. Mm-hmm. You got these guys. Well, they're little jelly beans. <laughs> Yellow, <laughs> what are they, banana jelly beans? They're banana buttered popcorn. and buttered popcorn that got too yellowed. <laughs> <laughs> too much butter. Yes, too much butter on those. Butter popcorn jelly beans. We got these little jelly bean guys, and they're speaking all kinds of different languages that are actual languages, apparently. Spanish, Italian. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much it. And they're running around, they're being all wacky and funny, and all these. Oh, funny. All these little kids are going crazy for them. They're telling their moms and pops. They're telling their grandpappy and their grandmammy. And, you know, everyone's everyone's just having a, gr- a grand old time with them. Well, stop. <laughs> because you're crazy people. <laughs> stop the madness. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Fuck you. Let's... We're going to talk about... 
Marvel. All right. A... Some might say we already did. <laughs> But this is real Marvel. Yeah, cinematic universe Marvel. We're gonna talk the MC universe. And there's a what two or three? We got a couple. We've got Avengers two. The lesser of the uh, Marvel movies that came out this summer. Ant Man one. The. That's it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna the, that's gonna be it. So. Um. Go ahead. These are movies that you actually saw. So. Avengers 2, I thought, was good. There were some parts of it that I really liked. Mm-hmm. The overall thing of it was not that great. It was kind of boring, kind of done. Yeah. Uh, it was, I mean... It, it feels like it was there just because they had to have an Avengers 2. Right. And then they made it flashy. Yeah. It was, I was hoping for a little more lead-in to Civil War. Definitely. But I didn't really get that. It looked like it was trying to do that at points, but then it shied away from it. Well, I mean... Like, with them kind of... whole Iron Man fight. Yeah. I mean, that was a thing. And then also with Iron Man creating... Ultron right. and them being mad about it, but then they were all work together again. So I mean, it didn't really, didn't really do it for me in that sense. It was kind of just, just you know, like our friends in PMI say, just, they're just fighting a bunch of robots again. Yep. That's what happened in the first one. There's yep. just a bunch of things. Just a whole of things. That's why that they need just mowing through. Yeah, that's why they need a huge team is because there's a bunch of little dudes but like no, technically they don't they don't need a huge team yeah thor we, could easily just do it by himself yeah he's a god but okay but uh ant-man ant-man i thought was really good yeah Ant-Man's a good good flick i thought it was really good i thought it was a bit talky at points but um mm-hmm. it's a different kind of marvel movie yeah this wasn't supposed to it was a heist film at, at its core right that happened to feature a marvel superhero I guess. It, it was about, for me, it was about a guy and his own problems rather than a guy trying to save the world. Yeah, right. And, and I, think, I think that's what's so cool about it and refreshing about it yeah. is that it's, uh, it's not the world is in danger and everyone's going to die. Well, it, it kind of is. No. Because well, if that got into the wrong hands... The, the guy thing... was trying to start like the suit army. And... Right. Yeah. It was barely about that. It was more about him saving his daughter. Yeah. Or, like, being there for his daughter. His own redemption, second chance, kind of. And, like, uh, if anything, he was just trying to, like, protect his own technology. Because the guy stole the technology from him. Right. I don't know. I think think it was about his own second chance and redemption. He wanted to prove himself to his ex-wife and his daughter, so... Right. I think that's what it's most about. I liked it. I thought Paul Rudd was really good. See, this movie had action. This movie had a script. This movie not, not as good as it could have been though. Yeah, yeah. This movie had a story. It had acting. Did it did it have symbolism? Not really. I mean, is Ant Man in itself a symbolism? I think you could argue that the fact that his... I don't think so. His ability is to become small. You could argue that, but is that their intention? Could be. No. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Moving on. Well, this solid summer for Marvel. Oh, yeah. If you you just close your eyes for Fantastic Four. Yeah, yeah. Forget that happened. That's uh, that's Fox anyway. Right. But for Marvel, solid, not great. Mm -hmm. Good summer, though. Yeah, but... Stay tuned next summer. Next summer is going to be... It's going to be big. Possibly. We got Civil War. Yeah. We'll see how that turns out. Okay. All right. We're talking about this summer right now, not next summer. Okay. So what did we talk about already? Mad Max, Fantastic Four, Minions, Avengers, and Ant-Man. Guys. We got a lot left. 
Let's talk about some middle middle grounders. Yeah, let's talk let's talk comedies. We talked one comedy a little bit, spy, but let's talk about some other comedies. Okay. How about my favorite comedy? Mm-hmm. Pitch Perfect Two. Pitch Perfect Two is great. It was fucking hilarious. People like hate on the Pitch Perfect movies. Why? But they're good. They're really really funny. <laughs> they are. And the music is mostly really good. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Also, a lot of a lot of YouTube uh, support in this one. Yeah. We had Pentatonix. Flula was a main character. And that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, yeah, I mean, lots of like little guy, little celebrity cameos. Like, not little celebrity, like lesser known um, entertainers. Right. Pentatonix, Flula, uh, Reggie Watts. Reggie Watts, yeah, that was awesome. That's also the other surprise people in that scene. Mm-hmm. The Green Bay Packers. <laughs> yeah. It was insane. There were so many great subtle jokes, too, mm-hmm. that I loved. That Honestly, I never laughed. The hardest time I laughed this year was at Pitch Perfect 2 when the fucking, what were their names? Uh, one of them was Ashley. Ashley and, like, Rebecca or something. I don't know. Or, I'm, or Jessica. Jessica. Ashley and Jessica. She's like, honestly, I can't tell. I, can't, I don't know which one of you is Ashley and which one of you is Jessica. And both of them say, I'm Jessica. And then stare at each other. Oh, my God. Oh, that was funny. That was, like, some of the funniest shit. Anyway, great movie. See Pitch Perfect 2. When it comes out on Netflix. When it comes out on Netflix and Blu-ray and DVD. Huh. And get it on, like, a red box. I'd say it's worth a red box rental. Is that one dollar? Yeah. I do have it on a... I have the first one on Blu-ray because I got it for free. I have it also on Blu-ray. I didn't... Well, I guess I got it for free in that it's my girlfriend's. (laughs) And I live with her, so... Were there there other comedies? Spy, but you talked about that. Um, And uh, best comedy, maybe even San Andreas. Talk about your action. Your acting. Your story, no, your no. your script, no, your practical effects, <laughs> no, God no. I know people who ran through the mud uphill for days for that movie. What do you mean? What? I know people who ran that movie. What? They ran up a hill. Uphill the... in the mud while water was being sprayed at them oh. for di- multiple days. That sucks. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was the. A... That was one of the bigger disappointments for me, actually. Yeah. I mean... I mean... The Rock is a, is a, incredible. He's, he's good. He's the best. He's, yeah, he's, yeah. Who's better, The Rock or Vin Diesel? The Rock. Duh. All right. I mean, it's a close race. <laughs> no. No. All right. Um, San Andreas could have redeemed itself if... Uh, in only one way, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I could forgive the script, acting, and lack of story, and all the dumb shit that happened if The Rock jumped into one of the cracks, grabbed each side, and pulled (laughs) San Francisco back together. (laughs) That would have been the greatest moment in cinematic history. Right? Akin to him flexing Flexing the the cast off of his broken arm to go save Vin Diesel and the crew. Man, if he had done that in real life, we'd still have Paul Walker. Wow. I can't believe he just went there. Yeah, he saved him in the movie by flexing the thing off his arm. Period 7 is not a summer movie. Alright, we won't get into that then. That's enough of The Rock. Alright, let's get into some smaller movies. We got two on here worth mentioning. Oh, for... Definitely sure. Let's hear it. Hit it. Dope. Dope. <laughs> um, coming back to theaters this Friday. Coming back out, yeah. Um, dare I say that this movie was dang good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was really hoping you were, hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely going to speak to a certain audience. Um a certain race more than oh, others. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously. Okay, like, yeah. The monologue is, like, him talking about all the tough shit he's gone through, and then he literally says, like, but would any of this happen if I wasn't black? 
Mm. So yeah, okay. like it's still like it's still really good and yeah. enjoyable for everyone, but it's definitely gonna. Mm. I want to change the topic of okay. what we're talking about okay. now. So let's move from that movie now okay. then to Straight Outta Compton, right? Which does the same thing. Uh, in, a, in a way but also I think what's so great about Straight Out of Compton is I'm going to talk like completely seriously about this movie because this is one of the best movies I've seen ever it's up there really? maybe maybe, uh-huh. maybe not in my top five or so but I just saw it yes two days ago mm-hmm. and it was really good that was when I was going to either going to see that or the gift mm-hmm. and um, it kind of it takes the misunderstanding of what rap music was in the beginning and also like yeah it takes that misunderstanding and makes it very relatable to a wide audience and really portrays it very well to people who weren't part of that culture and it was it was that you know, the media that everyone was saying, like, why should we can't be allowing this kind of music? Like, it perpetuates, like, violence and, and, like, drugs and, like, killing cops and shit or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's not what it was. It was a reaction to the violence that was being done to them on the part of what either the police or it was part of the a reaction to the gang violence they were living and seeing every day it was a part of their own culture not just oh we're trying to be hard yeah it was they were they were talking about what was real to them and i think to, to push that down and try to say that it's like oh it's just it's just violent hate music is um, a misunderstanding mm-hmm. of what it actually is. Yeah. yeah, and I think the movie did a really good job of portraying that and making that accessible to people outside of that culture to be able to understand what it was. And I liked it a lot. It was really good. Yeah. No, that's. I definitely got that from it. But another like big thing I took from it was they. Uh, police brutality was like a big theme in it right and there was a scene where one of the like uh most brutal cops was also black right and for me that kind of made it like interesting how they turned it's always been like a white versus black thing Mm -hmm. for me like that's how the media paints it Mm -hmm. but they made it seem like more of just police force versus low yeah. lower income. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's the um. I, I guess what's interesting about that scene is, and we're we're spoiling all these movies, by the way. If you haven't realized by now, we're just gonna be talking about them. So just saying, just throwing that out there. What's interesting? What's interesting about that scene is that there is a there one of the one of the cops is black, hmm. and also what's his name? Their manager, Paul Giamatti. Right, yeah, but <laughs> that, but his real name was it Jerry or something? Oh Jerry, yeah, Jerry, Jerry something. something yeah. I forget. Um, he was there, oh, and I wanted him to. I didn't know the full story about everything mm-hmm. that happened or whatever. I wanted him to be good so bad because in that scene, he is saying like, "You can't just do this. Like this is illegal. You, like you, they're just standing here. These are they work here. They're yeah. making music, and like you can't just be doing this stuff because." that you think that they look like they might be causing trouble and that to me made me that part made me really like him but then of course later he was like kind of screwing them over maybe not fully intentionally but kind of probably intentionally too like yeah (laughs) he he like yeah it was a very long standing like or a long running like con he was pulling Mm. so but that that was an interesting scene because he a white guy and then this yeah. uh, black cop. It's like the roles are reversed from what we are like, told by. Right. Media. But I think still, even in that scene, it's it shows the institutionalized racism within the police force. Mm-hmm. And 
it took the white guy coming out for it to be okay maybe the only reason that they that didn't continue and that they were weren't arrested in that moment mm-hmm. was because the white guy came out and said hey stop that right yeah um yeah there's a lot of like deep stuff and straight out of compton yeah it was i think it was incredibly well done very well acted i loved all all of the performances were really good um, uh yeah i was gonna say i um i keep track of like certain good performances or screenplay uh in anticipation for oscar season mm-hmm. and summer movies never yeah. make the list but i have paul giamatti for supporting supporting actor for sure thought um all the three uh, main main cast they all did really well the easy e i thought they were really good yeah for sure uh yeah. dr dre and ice cube were all really good also i what's weird is that ice like cube junior <laughs> sure <laughs> that's weird name, right yeah what's weird about straight out of compton sorry is that um it's like a meaningful movie but it got well, it's a meme also. Like, right? it got yeah. so much, like, public notice yeah. as well. Well, they created that as a promotional tool. Right. Yeah. Well, they they created a Snapchat filter. Right, the Straight out of The Straight out of Compton was the filter. I'm pretty... Didn't um, they make the Straight out of Put Your Thing? I don't think so. I thought they did. All right, so... I... Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it, Compton. It's, it's rare that a movie can um, intersect both serious critical acclaim in writing and also a big uh, general have, audience right they following. have that kind of like blockbuster like marketing mentality kind of right yeah yeah i thought that was really cool well, that's rare yes and uh yeah good right. summer flick good summer flick it had that it had that action it had oh. the acting it had the script it had the story. It had those practical effects. That's for sure. Great movie. All right. We're going to talk about one more thing here before the break. Tommy. Um, me and Earl and the dying girl. Hey. That rhymes. Oh, yeah, it does. And that's it. How lucky is Earl that he has the only name in the title that's talking about three different people? He's pretty lucky, actually. He's, <laughs> he's not a very big role in the you movie. You ever thought about that? Like, it's me... You would think me and the dying girl are probably the most important people in this film. They are. But Earl's the only one whose name is in the title. Well, there's reasons for that. Okay. You need to see the movie. It's a independent movie, obviously. An indie film? <clears throat> I believe. And it's... Spectacular. Maybe the best movie of the summer, in my opinion. Wow, better than Matthew Max. Oh, definitely. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Max is my favorite, but I also really liked um, Straight Outta Compton, obviously. Right. <laughs> well, I don't know. Me and Earl and the Dying Girl is like actually on my top five favorite movies of the year right now. So. Okay. Sounds good. Anything else you want to say about it? I haven't seen it, so. Um... Yeah, go watch it. All right. Sounds good. Oh, uh, uh, best screenplay of the year so far. Yeah? For you sure. Like, yeah. Is it original or is it adapted? It's adapted from a book. Yeah, okay. But... All right. And we got, a, we got a little bit of time left. We're just going to very quickly talk about our good friend's film. Uh, it's called Sinister 2. <laughs> our good friend is in it named Bagul. Bagul. You may know him from the We Talking With You To You podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, just you know, solid flick. You you know, I mean, talk about your action, talk about your acting. Not a lot. Of talk action. about your script. No talk about your story. No no story. Talk about your practical effects. Um, Sinister is Sinister Two is uh, up there for the worst movie of the summer. Mm. Is it worse than Fan Fan Four Stick? Fan Four Stick. Yeah. Worse, yeah. worse than that. Yeah. All right. Well, don't tell our good friend Bagul that he'll eat you. But it's not the it's not the very worst though. What's the very worst? 
we'll let you know in our uh, 10 second review oh <laughs> we're just coming up right now oh if you haven't heard a 10 second review before what we do is we put 10 seconds on the clock Tommy has 10 seconds to review that film I will cut him off exactly at 10 seconds no going over Tommy what are you reviewing for us today we are your friends. We are your friends, starring Zachary Efron. Yep, directed by Max. Um, I, and Kasich. this is the Skrillex biopic, right? Might as well be. Okay. Well, we're gonna put ten seconds on the clock. Tommy, are you ready? Skrillex biopic would I'm be not... better. Okay, we're not starting okay. yet. Are you ready? Yes. Are you set? Yeah. Go. Screenplay and artistic direction are completely a jumbled mess. It looks like they had no idea what they're doing, just a million ideas and no direction to take them in. Stop. Well. I mean. Go see it, as really, what I heard. Really quick uh, on that note, what I want to say is, um, not, there's only one other time in my life that I've actively asked people to not see a movie, <laughs> um, and that was with Pain and Gain. Right. And... Again, I have to ask people to please not see this movie. It's a bad representation of what um, films should look like. All right. Well, you heard it here first. So we're going to take a quick break right after our sponsor, which is... We are your friends. <laughs> <laughs> if you see this movie this weekend only... You're going to get a $100 gift card to whatever store you want. Oh. And also a shout out on a Fan Gear Network podcast of your choosing. Oh, God. We'll see you after the break. Wait, are we giving them $100 gift cards? None of that is true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Fan Geared podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I thought of something during the break. What's that? We didn't get Joey's opinions. We've been steamrolling this entire conversation. We haven't let him get a single word in. He's been raising his hand this whole time. I know. His a- his arm must be tired. <laughs> He's right. nodding. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is All right. Well, we're gonna give him. We're gonna give him a minute now to to let us know about everything we just talked about. So, Joey. Yeah. No. I'm really glad we didn't let him talk. Those were. That was just terrible, terrible points. Opinions. No. Terrible not, opinions? He didn't say anything once about action, story, story. you know, acting. practical effects, acting, symbolism. script, symbolism, anything. You didn't say, oh, God. All right, whatever. Well, we'll take it from here. Jesus. Amateur. So, according to the box office, best movie of all time. <laughs> not even of just this summer? All time. <laughs> Jurassic World. I saw this movie as the first movie I ever saw at a drive-in. How was that? It was fun. Yeah. Had a couple beers, watched a nice cool summer flick. Talk about your action. I guess, technically. This one definitely had a script. Uh, not, no. I liked not Jurassic World. One. I liked Jurassic World. I think it's, I thought it was really cool. Sure, it's cool. I mean, best movie of all time, according to the box office. It's far and away from that. I mean, it's a fun summer movie. It's obviously not my favorite movie of all time. Obviously, <laughs> it did break the box office record. And did we mention that already? For the biggest movie. <laughs> Financially of all time. I don't think you said that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much all we can say about it. It's, it was fun. I thought it was a cool thing. It's actiony, but it also takes too long to get into the action. I suppose. So it's like barely even a good summer movie, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Okay. In my professional opinion. Right, of course. It's a professional movie watcher. I think that it was a perfect summer movie. Perfect. Yeah. I went to go see it at the drive-ins with some beers, hanging out with my girlfriend and her family, just chilling in the back of uh, her 
parents' minivan <laughs> with her whole family. Sounds great. And just drinking beers and watching the movie. I can't think of a better summer than that. It was fun. It was nice. Um, well, agree to disagree. All right. All right. Well. Too violent. Too much blood. What? Dude. There was I, like really I, I like blood. randomly thought about that today. Jurassic Park had a lot of blood. No. Yeah, dude. Not human. I... You, like, what, spit up a goat leg, but yeah. that was the gorgeous part. What made me think of, like, what made, really reminded me of Jurassic Park, well, there was a, there were a few things that kind of... There was one part that really captured, I think, Jurassic Park in Jurassic World. And that was when the thing first gets out, and that one guy is hiding behind the car, and then he eats him. Does that capture Jurassic well, Park's me, theme, well, or... Is that an exact? I think the feel of Jurassic Park was in that scene because I didn't expect them to go there in this movie. To eat people? I didn't expect it to be like... I expected it to be like, oh, the thing could kill us, but it wasn't but really going to actually eat people. I didn't think it was going to show like really any of that. Mm. I thought they would shy away from it. But they didn't. I think they went too far with it. Really? The pterodactyls... Yeah, dude, that's that's real. You could get swooped up by a pterodactyl at any moment. As long as I protect my margaritas. <laughs> <that's all I'm laughs> great shot, great uh, shot. Another great meme. Yeah. All right, so that's Jurassic World. I liked it. I liked it. All right. Good. All right, uh, we're going to talk about one more movie here. Um, this one's a special one. This one is called... It in side out. Inside out. Um, now this one was animated, right? This is an animated motion picture by the Pixar Disney and Pixar Animation Studios. Not familiar with either of those. Alright, yeah, but you have seen the movie. Yes. Okay. So um, let's talk about that then. I have seen it twice. I've also seen it twice. Both in the movie theater? Mm-hmm. One of mine was at the drive-ins. Oh. See, um, this to me is not a drive-in movie. Why? Because you can't talk during this movie. Sure you can. All right. <laughs> no, my girlfriend did talk over the uh, line where Bing Bong was like, fly her to the moon or whatever. And I was like, God. One of the best lines. So you're not together anymore? No. Good. Of course not. You made the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, this is a, wow, tearjerker. The first time I saw it, I liked it. The second, second time, time I saw it, loved it. There you go. Second favorite movie of the year. I knew you'd come around. Second favorite movie of the year. You were such, like, a stinker the first time. I would know. I did. I liked it. I st- and I told you guys multiple times. I had to keep clarifying that I really liked it. It just wasn't exactly the the five-year hype build did not pay off for me right away. Okay. The first time I That's saw fair. it. That's fair. Yeah. Um, but... Second time I saw it. I loved it. I went home. I bought the soundtrack, and I listened to it alone in the park at night. And it was just really great. And then I wrote an entire script the next day. <laughs> it's a good soundtrack. It's a really good soundtrack. I love it. They have a good iOS game. Oh, do they? On the movie now. Is it like match four, match three angers, or match three fears? No, it's a bubble shooter. <laughs> So so, so pretty possible. similar. <laughs> <laughs> so like the same. Okay, good. Um, good. I mean, it's a tearjerker. It's a fun time. It's insanely uniquely creative. It's super creative and very unique. And I think, I mean, for someone, I can't imagine being eleven years old watching that movie. Yeah, it's got to be like for real. 
the for real shit. Well, if you're 11, I don't think you totally understand what's going on. I mean, so. I think it's a good way of... A lot of, a lot of knocking going around on the ground here. I think um, it's a really good way to kind of show... Not, not to say that older people know what they're going through better than they do, but I think it's a good way to visualize and or realize maybe what they could be thinking or feeling or and i think it also does a very good job of making those emotions pretty complex and not that they have to be exactly this way all right what's happening here hammering why (laughs) um yeah i think it's a good learning experience for the kids right around that age Mm -hmm. and it's like I don't know. It's not like necessarily a learning experience for adults, but it's a touching experience. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a great. You could see this movie at any age, and I mean, it's relatable. This has been said about Pixar movies since the dawn of the dinosaurs. Since Cars two. And um, since Cars two, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, but yeah, they make movies for everybody to be able to watch and get something of value out of and. This is no exception. If anything, this is one of one of the best examples of that. This is up there with Up and Toy Story One, I would and say. Wally and Wally, yeah. And a Bug's Life. Sh- sure, and I mean, Incredibles and Finding Nemo. Yeah. And Monsters Inc. I, I would say though that like Up is in a, a different pantheon than even those. I haven't watched Up since it came out in theaters. But it, it it's. It's one of those ones that it's just like you you know this this movie is different you know than the others, no, no. and I think Inside Out is up there with Up. Wow. Yeah. It's uh, surprising to hear from you, but nice. All right. Um, dare we say this is a lock for best animated film? Sure. <laughs> dare we say that? Right. I would say this movie could have been pure shit and it's still would have won. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. Okay. When when is the Academy not going to pick Disney Pixar? Cars two. Boom. All right, well, what that year? counter example, Brave. Brave. When every other... Brave over Paranorman. They Brave over Paranorman. Brave over Frankenweenie. Brave over... What was the other one? Frankenweenie was also Disney, though. Yeah, but it wasn't Disney. Pixar. Right. What was the other one that was that year? Uh, that Pirates was something. No, it wasn't that. Yeah, it was. It's no, it was something else that I thought... Because it was like it was one where I had seen every movie, and I was like, wow, all of these deserve to win except for Brave. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Pirates was one of them. I didn't see that one, though. I don't know. Well, whatever. It, it didn't deserve to win that year. What? We're talking about summer 2015 movies right now, and let me tell you, Inside Out, action, action. script... Story? Yeah. Acting? Yes, for dang sure. Practical effects? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's animated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Inside Out. Really good. Uh, take your kids or don't take your kids. You're gonna, you're gonna like it. Yeah, take, them, take them where? I guess it is still in theaters. Is it? Yeah, that and Jurassic World are both still at Oak Ridge. Wow. That's because they made so much goddamn money. So much money. <laughs> but uh, deservedly so for this one. Uh, that was really good. Mm-hmm. All right. That's about it for summer movies. I mean, obviously, there's a lot we're missing. All right, but... yeah. We're not talking about everything here. But um, we're going to move on to a couple of video games. We don't have a lot, but we've got a few. And we're going to start with the first. The biggest, the baddest. The the world. There's two that could be the biggest. We're starting with Arkham Knight. Okay. That's, that's my biggest. All right. Well, speak on it. Okay. Arkham Knight. Um, you know, the only reason why... The only reason why I bought a next-gen console that isn't a Wii U, because I didn't want to play it on Wii U... I don't think game? you can. Because <laughs> you can't. <laughs> um, was for this game. And it's good. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's uh, probably third on out of all the Arkham games. Yeah. 
That makes sense for me. But <laughs> out of four, yeah. But I mean, is City really the best? Game, obviously, City was so good. City is one of the best games ever. Hmm. I haven't even played Arkham Knight yet. I'm still waiting for you to 100 percent it so I can borrow it. Oh, I haven't played it in months. Well, then just give it to me. <laughs> well, you can only have one of my discs at a time. <laughs> okay. Fine. All right, you got me. Um, but yeah, it's incredible. Incredible? Yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot of flaws, but, it's a, I mean, it takes a lot for me to buy a $400 PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. So. And you did it. But I, I do have to say, I predicted the end. Yeah. From the beginning. All right. Well then. Let's move on to a little game we like to call Splatoon. Sp Splatoon. This game is sweeping the nation. Sweeping the world. Sweeping the weaves. Sweeping the world in terms of America and Japan. Maybe right. some Canada and European countries, but... Yeah. Yeah, some Canada countries. Yeah. <laughs> Canada has countries. You got Quebec. You got Toronto. I don't Montreal. think you're thinking of countries. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've heard this is a good game. Yeah, and um, it's this is Nintendo getting into the shooter game in pure Nintendo fashion. Because this is not your... Let me grab a real gun and shoot some dude in the face and kill him. Bonus points for a headshot. Exactly. This is some kids... Some squids, squids, some paints, some brushes, and some squirt guns fighting for their turf. For their color. For their color. Wow. There might be some, some racial implications here. here. Some deep meanings here. But yeah, no, it's a fun, it's fun, it's adorable, it's kid friendly, but it's getting into that shooter territory which is pretty profitable which they haven't really gotten into too much lately they did it with metroid um with you know the prime series and the first person shooter but now they're getting into the multiplayer game a lot more this is definitely their biggest multiplayer game um, that they've ever put out with more people you can have more people in one game than in any other nintendo game mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a big step for them. I think they seem to be doing very well with it. A lot of people really like it, so. Yeah, I mean, it came yeah. out, like, a few months ago. Yeah, they're constantly updating and, it, yeah, too. Yeah, they're put, adding new weapons, like, yeah. Lots of support it seems for like it. every week. Got the Amiibos for it. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're really supporting it, and I think that's a, that's a good move on them. So, yeah. We're going to go over two real quick ones, because these are kind of uh, some rapid-fire ones. Rare Replay. So if you had like a Nintendo 64 or like a PlayStation 1 or something back in the day, you might have played some games like Banjo-Kazooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day. Well, these are some great games from back in the day. Banjo-Kazooie is, is considered one of the Nintendo classic um, Nintendo 64 games. You know, it's a great 3D platforming uh, mechanics. Just a just a fun, fun adventure, really. And uh, what now? We can play them again. We can play that again now, only on the Xbox One. Of course. So we can't play that again right now. But <laughs> but um, uh, Conquer's Bad for a Day also uh, was a great game. It was kind of it was a game that back in the day was like there was around the time before it was released. The, uh, it didn't test very well because people were like, what's this like cute squirrel? What is like, this is Nintendo trying to be cute again, mm -hmm. you know, like they're with their cute characters or whatever. Uh, game comes out and the squirrel is, starts, the game starts and this cute squirrel is drunk as shit trying to have sex with his super sexy squirrel girlfriend and is like swearing and all this shit and then literally the first boss is a giant poop monster <laughs> well that sounds great it was oh uh, wow now i want to play it 
I honestly <laughs> I want to have sex with the squirrel girlfriend. It doesn't happen. Dang it. Yeah. Another one we're talking about real quick, uh, sweeping the nation right now, Rocket League. This was a free game on PlayStation Plus a couple months ago, and a lot of people are into it now. Um, it's like, from what I can understand, I haven't played it, but it's um, co- soccer with cars, I think. I don't know. I've never heard of it. And you're scoring goals, and a lot of people are going crazy about it. Apparently, it's really good. I'm interested in getting into it. I'm really mad that I missed the picking it up for free on PlayStation Plus. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. It could be it could be worth a fifteen dollars. Because uh, a lot of people are playing it online. It's got a big online community and stuff. So, yeah. All right. Next up, we have the final game of the summer and possibly the biggest metal gear 5 was it phantom pain uh i don't know what game you're talking about but i know of metal gear solid 5 metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain you can't just take a word out of a title whatever it's metal gear that's what people say and uh, um, actually people say mgsv all right Okay, so um, what are your thoughts on this game? There's a lot of controversy surrounding this game. Um, but this is the last we're going to see of Kojima on the Metal Gear series. And ever. No. Oh, okay. Probably going to make more games later on. Um, um, the most I've ever played of a Metal Gear game is... Uh, playing as Snake in Super Smash Bros. <laughs> Brawl. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm in that boat as well. Um, I would be interest definitely be interested in playing if they ever did like a an HD. I think they did do an HD re-release. Did they? Probably. I thought they did. Well, I would be interested in playing them. They look really good. I unfortunately did not follow them from the very beginning, so I'm uh, it's a little lost on me at this point. But a lot of people are really excited. I'm sure that it's going to be uh, really good. Yeah, so far I've only heard good things. Yeah, and uh, this is the uh, the farewell, the farewell game for Hideo Kojima on his Metal Gear series, which is pretty sad. They're going to continue the Metal Gear series without him, unfortunately. It's very sad, yeah, but, uh, especially considering those are all going to be mobile games. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, so. What? But we're ending this summer 2015 yeah. Good with word, action, honestly. story, it's... acting, practical effects, Thanks. symbolism, symbolism, script. Script, okay. You might have said script twice. No, I said nope. story. Oh, sorry. All right. Now, I don't know if Tommy read my notes or not, but we have one surprise game to talk about. We're talking, of course, about the port to Xbox One and PlayStation 4, everyone's favorite Wii U launch title, Zombie. (laughs) No, we're not. (laughs) Okay, we'll see you next week. You do plugs. Oh, yeah, I always forget plugs. I literally forget every week. Um, What are we plugging? I would like... Give me a personal plug. I'm going to do a somber plug. Oh, a somber pl- plug. I would like to plug my favorite franchise of horror movies. What? Okay, I see. I see what's happening um, here. Is it really your favorite? Featuring... Yeah. Okay. Definitely. All right. I mean, you could say Halloween's a great series, but that's really just because the first one is so good. Yeah. Name one other good horror movie franchise. It's mm. consistent across multiple movies. I don't know. There are none. Okay. <laughs> talking about Scream, talking about one of my favorite movie characters of all time in Ghostface. Um... Talking about so that. follow Wes go, Raven go, on Twitter. <laughs> go watch those movies, support them, um, because the creator uh, recently, doesn't need your money anymore. He recently passed away, and it's um, got me real sad. 
Yes, it is, of course, um, a sad day when we, uh, we lose some great film creators and, um... Some good inspirers. Yes. Um, also follow at Awkward Tommy on Twitter. Who's that? That's me. Oh, okay. All right, for me, follow me on Twitter at Josh CV. Also on Instagram, same thing. Um, you can also make sure to subscribe to this channel, which you're watching this on. Fan Geared. Fan Geared. <laughs> follow us at Fan Geared on Twitter and Instagram, as well as Facebook.com slash Fan Geared. And hey, if you like this video, share it with friends. Hey, why don't you go share it with your friends? And also, we miss, we miss Joey. Joey, what do you have to plug? All right, you you heard it here. Also, uh, leave a comment. What's your biggest summer memory? Best summer memory. This could include movies. It can include video games. Or it could include something that has nothing to do with any of that stuff. It could include beach, beach trips. trips. What oh the hell just happened? <laughs> Get out of my brain. It's almost like that's what people do in the summer. Beach trips. Yeah. It could include... How many beach trips did you go on this summer? Zero. Oh, I went like three. I hate the beach. Oh, let's do it again. It could include outdoor beach barbecues. Oh, okay. All right, let's try to do it. One more. It Wait. can include <laughs> what? Two. two. It can include Pool playing parties. video no. games <laughs> inside. Close the curtains. All right, let us know. So let, let us know that in the comments. Also, let us know um, if you are Joey. I will see you next week. Bye.